Well, that's making a really loud buzzing noise. That doesn't sound right, is it? I don't normally do videos of games that I've uh, only just recently bought because uh, first time plays of games uh, you know they don't really show off the game very well if you don't know how to play it if you don't know the controls and whatnot uh, but I got this game pretty recently and this is a uh, this is one of two versions of Double Dragon for the Amstrad CPC and this is the good version um, I think this is also pretty uncommon as well and uh, it comes in this unusual plastic box which I thought was pretty cool comes with a pretty pretty pathetic instruction manual and uh, this floppy disk is weird now this is a standard Amstrad floppy disk so that's not what's weird what's weird about it is that they they weren't very professional it looks like they've just bought a disk just an ordinary Amstrad disk and slaps a label on it now that's not to say that this is um, uh, a pirate copy. Uh, this is just how they used to do it sometimes. So it's a very unprofessional, <laughs> scruffy sticker. Uh, but it's the real game, and I'm going to play it on real hardware. Something else that I found a bit unusual. Now these um, instruction manuals often have instructions for all of the different versions of the game um, that were released on the home computers. Uh, so it would have instructions for the PC, the Amiga, the Commodore 64 and everything. But there's a special note at the back here. A note from the programmers, and this is specifically for the Commodore 64 version. And it's just a kind of an explanation as to why there is a a gap between the top and the bottom of each player or something. <laughs> it's almost like they have to explain themselves so people don't send the game back thinking it's buggy. Uh, I've never played the Commodore 64 version, so I don't know what they're talking about here, but I'm guessing they used two sprites um, to save memory, and that means that the top and bottom half aren't always synced up. That's weird that they'd actually put that in the instruction manual. I've got my Amstrad CPC 464 all set up, and there's a, a lot of hardware here. So first of all, obviously I need my disk drive, and this is a 464 so I need a, a separate disk drive. Um, it's a 128k only game, I think. Maybe I should test that. Well anyway, I've got my um, extra 64k RAM pack plugged in, and uh, of course um, you can hear the humming there, I've got my modulator because I can't get a picture with any SCART cable uh, that's in colour. Okay, it works. 
It did take me a couple of attempts to get it to actually load up. I had some trouble with uh, my actual setup. Very old hardware we're talking about, so it's not surprising. And also the disc just didn't work at first. I had to very carefully get a cotton bud and uh, clean the disc. Which has worked for me before in the past. And uh, it worked for this game as well, so here we go. working copy of the good version of Double Dragon. It, it does... the presentation is very very scruffy. It, it might seem like a game that was rushed, published as is, but I think actually a lot of games back then were made in much the same way. Uh, they were made under a very tight deadline and it was basically down to the programmer to get a product out in three months, let's say, and the people in charge of publishing it had absolutely no idea about the game. It was simply a case of give us something we can sell and we'll sell it. So the programmer would obviously try their best. I had a look at the instruction manual just a minute ago, uh, just to double check. You can see here that I'm struggling to pick up the baseball bat, and that's because I thought the Amstrad version would um, be the same as the Spectrum version in terms of controls. I was just trying to pick up by pressing fire. Uh, but in this version you have to hold down and press fire. But it doesn't say that anywhere in the instructions. Um, a lot of these games that are on multiple formats will have an instruction book, and usually a pretty small instruction book, um, with controls for about five, six different versions. So obviously there's a lot of um, potential for mistakes. Um, so it's not my fault, <laughs> let's put it that way. Um, but you, you can't really avoid them because they are very very useful in this game. Um, you'll see me pick up one of those I don't know what they are, yellow boxes later on and um, they kind of bounce across the screen and they're quite useful to knock down a few different enemies at once. Oh yeah, um, I... I lost all my lives and I reached across to my computer um, to press 1 um, to use a, a credit. Uh, I accidentally pressed 2 so I've got a, a second player here on screen. Um, so I have to let him die before I can carry on or just sort of move him along. Uh, but I suppose I could use him as a decoy. So remember that if you're ever playing a two player game, um, you can use the second player as a, a decoy. That's a pro gamer tip for you.
playability, the game, the main thing about the game, I'm pretty impressed with because I'm used to Amstrad games being very, very slow and uh, past a certain point uh, arcade conversions were just simply not going to be arcade conversions were simply not going to be up to scratch with the uh, the odd exception uh, but this is very very playable I mean uh, it doesn't have some of the strange quirks that you see in some of the other versions um, I remember I got the Master System version uh, with my Master System when I first bought it and it always frustrated me that you you couldn't um, you couldn't pin down an enemy when you were attacking them so you'd walk up to them and you'd start punching them and they would just do a flying kick to your face midway through your combo and and with that it's just impossible to play through it without um, either resorting to one move or just accepting that you're going to take hits constantly uh, but this version is very playable actually I'm quite impressed with it graphically not so much now I've I've read a little bit about this game and it seems like part of the development of the game was sped up by converting graphics from one system to the other and it looks like the graphics were converted from the Atari ST version and I don't think they were touched up I think they were converted by some tool that the, the programmer probably wrote and then just put in the game and, and that's that um, it's very colourful there's 16 colours on screen and um, you can actually see what everything's supposed to be but it it's, it is all pretty ill-defined, I have to say. It does. It does seem a little bit slower than I'd like it to be, and some enemies, those uh, big. What are they called? A bobo? Uh, the really big men. Uh, I found it nigh on impossible to actually hit him without using a weapon. There can be quite a lot going on on screen at once in this game. Um, there's quite a quite a lot of weapons liberally spread about, and um, some of the sprites are pretty big. You can have two players, and you can have it looks like about three or four enemies on screen at once. Um, so yeah, that's. Pretty good stuff, actually. So overall, I'd say I am impressed with this game, and this is a game that I've um, I've seen, I've seen videos of. It's obviously an old game, so it's been around for a long time, and I finally got my hands on a copy. Um, and uh, I'm quite pleased with it. It's one of the better games for the Amstrad. So yeah, that's the video. And if you watched 
then thank you for watching.